parents could arrange for their daughter to adopt Lisa, Belize said. Um, and so he's, Gordon Jensen is claiming that this little girl Lisa is his daughter. That's what he's told the couple. Well, the Deckers come to believe that Lisa might have been abused. Um, so when they reached out to Jensen to finalize the adoption, he had disappeared. And after he disappeared, the Deckers were unable to complete the adoption. So unfortunately, Lisa was just taken into protective custody. They weren't able to adopt her. So in 1989, Jensen, later identified as Terry Rasmussen, he was arrested for child abandonment and he was sentenced to three years in prison. And under his plea agreement, the additional charge of child abuse was dropped. So upon Terry Rasmussen's release from prison, he broke parole and fled. And at this point, police, they're like using his name, Gordon Jensen, they have no idea about his real identity. So now jump with me once again, store that information away, jump with me again to another aspect of this story. And this is where the big picture really starts to tie together. So in the early 2000s, Eun Soon Joon, a chemist from California, was the first victim that they were able to tie to Terry Rasmussen as his true identity. So um, Eun Soon was in her mid-40s when she introduced to her new boyfriend, Larry Vanner, whom they later identified was Terry Rasmussen, once again in disguise. And her friend's talking to 2020, and she says he didn't look very healthy. His face was gray. He smoked constantly. Larry would just grab and gobble up everything on the table and belch and eat more. And then he'd go sit on the couch. Um, Boon soon disappeared from Richmond, California in June 2002, approximately two years after Vanner met her family and friends. Um, Vanner fended off her loved ones with an array of excuses. So her friend says... Um, he would say, well, she's busy taking care of her mother, or she was going to get some therapeutic help. He would say she didn't like me anymore and didn't want me in her life. Um, Rose, Unsun's friend, would told, tell him, I want Unsun, not you. I want Unsun to tell me she's done with our relationship, or I'm going in to go and get the sheriff involved. Rose ultimately went to the Contra Costa County Sheriff where um, a woman, Roxanne, who was a homicide detective, says they brought Larry Vanner in for questioning. And she said he was polite and soft-spoken and very smart with his twinkly blue eyes. He could get somebody to maybe trust him. All we were really trying to do was determine where Unsun was and if she was okay. And he wasn't being cooperative at all with that. While searching Vanner's California home, the detective and um, one of her associates located an enormous pile of cat litter in the crawl space. Big, like four or five feet around and approximately two or three feet high. I stood there for a few seconds. There was no odor. I remember seeing an axe leaned up there. So buried in the cat litter, police found a human foot completely mummified wearing a flip-flop. Ultimately, they identified the body as Unsun's, who police, um, they said she had died of blunt force trauma to the head, just like um, the women and the girl in the barrels. So the detective later said they determined a man matching Banner's description had bought 10 bags of cat litter from a nearby pet store. Um, and in 2003, or he was arrested in November 2002 for a murder. And in 2003, he was sentenced to prison for 15 years to life after he pled guilty to this crime. So, Vanner died in prison in December 2010 um, of natural causes. His true identity, Terry Rasmussen, was not revealed until 2017. So he died in prison. He was on trial for Unsun's murder under his alias. They had no idea that his real name was Terry Rasmussen, which is kind of crazy to me. So jumping back to the bodies found in the barrel, 
Rebecca Heath, a research librarian, said she had become obsessed with the case, and she helped identify the women and the two children in her sleuthing. So on an online message board, she connected with a woman who was looking for her missing family members, a woman and her two daughters, whose ages and locations matched that of the woman and the two girls found in the barrel who were related. You know, there was a woman and three girls, but the two girls were related to the woman, and then there was, like, the odd child out. So the woman also told Heath that her missing family member had once been married to a man with the last name Rasmussen. So as Heath was calling in to tip the authorities, an investigative genetic genealogist was uncovering the three victims' identities through a new technique that allowed you to extract DNA from the, um, the shaft of a single strand of hair. And so, yeah, like I said, there were four bodies found, the mother and the two girls who were related, but the other girl was not genetically related to them. Well, in 2016, this little girl was determined to be Terry Rasmussen's biological daughter. They were able to use the DNA taken from the little girl, which linked through a computer system to um, Terry Rasmussen's DNA that they had taken while he was in custody. So that's how they linked Terry Rasmussen to this case, which also revealed his true identity. Lisa, the little girl, Rasmussen was living with in the trailer park, who he claimed to be his daughter, was also linked to him through fingerprints. So even though he was living under an alias, when they arrested him for child abandonment connected to her case, they were able to link that with the fingerprints um, when he was brought into custody for Unsun's murder. Lisa was not Terry Rasmussen's biological daughter at all. So in 1981, Denise Bowden went missing shortly after Thanksgiving with her six-month-old daughter and her boyfriend, Rasmussen, whom she knew not as Terry Rasmussen, but as Robert T. Evans. Decades later, investigators discovered that Denise Bowden was the mother of the child known as Lisa, a little girl Rasmussen claimed in the 1980s was his daughter, which DNA tests later confirmed was not true. Um, Denise Bowden, Lisa's mother, has never been located to this day. So when Lisa was taken into protective custody in 1986, police asked her if she had any siblings. And police believe her answer indicates that they might have been killed by Rasmussen too. She said she did have siblings, but they died from eating grass mushrooms when they were out camping. Which is, yeah, there were more victims out there, definitely. Which, why he didn't kill Lisa, but he killed the other young girls, including his own daughter, is kind of mind-baffling. But the authorities are pretty sure he was um, sexually abusing her, which would explain, is super fucked up obviously, but would explain why he kept her alive. Yeah, that's disgusting. Um, and there are thought to be more victims of Terry Rasmussen who have never been found. So one is the mother of the middle child, the unidentified girl in the second barrel found in Bear Brook State Park, who was determined to be Rasmussen's biological daughter. Um, this little girl's mom has never been found or identified. They really have no greater information. Um, also in 1995, scavengers found a refrigerator containing what some believe may be another one of Rasmussen's victims. The refrigerator had been dumped in a canal in San, San Juan County, California. Excuse me if I said that wrong. The scavengers actually walked up in the middle of the canal because it was just mud. They cut the rope and opened it there, and that's when they saw what they thought to be a human being inside. They said the body of the woman was found in a state of advanced decomposition, and the police couldn't discern her facial features. She had been placed in the refrigerator with a pillow, sleeping bag, and what appeared to be several blankets, they said. Also in the refrigerator was a unique brand of 
milk that was only delivered to a certain area that matched up with where Rasmussen had been living at the time. Additionally, the woman's remains bore the hallmark of Rasmussen's other victims. They said she had blood force trauma to the head, and then she was put in a container, and the container was tied off, and he dumped it. The investigation stalled because she's still unidentified. The first thing we need to do is find out who she is, because without knowing who she is, it's pretty hard to track back to find out where she stayed and who her relatives were and who she's associated with, the assistant sheriff said. It well could be Terry, it well could be somebody else, but I think until we know her identity, we're not going to solve the case. So there were also some people from Rasmussen's life that he left alive. So when authorities traced all of his aliases back to his true name, they found that in the early 1970s, he had been married and fathered four children from that marriage. All of them were still alive. So one of his daughters spoke to 2020. She said, my father's full name is Terry Peter Rasmussen, and he was born December 23rd, 1943. She said her mother and Rasmussen got married in 1968 in Hawaii. She said, my father's been out of my life since I was like six or seven. We have his eyes. I do. My sister does. My brother does. Remember, the authorities talked about how he had the really distinct blue eyes. She said, I do know what my mother tells me. All that I can get from her is that he was the great love of her life. I don't know if my mother knew his capacity for violence, but I don't think she knew about this, his ability to kill women and children. If my mother wouldn't have left my father, it could have been me. It would have been me. That's heavy. And so Terry Rasmussen died in prison in December 2010, so we'll never get the full answers to why he did what he did. And like I said, the web didn't really unravel until after his death, so I think that if authorities knew the full extent of his crimes, they really would have studied him and how his brain worked in greater detail, and who knows how many victims he really had, and it will definitely be interesting to see if more are identified in the future. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Feel free to leave your comments, um, comment your thoughts about this case below. Thanks for watching.